It's time! The DDP, episode five. That's the Devlin Door podcast. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform out of New Zealand. International cricket commentator Simon Dool joins me out of England. What are we talking about today? Kapil Dev, the Indian cricket legend, pleading to the ICC saying, please preserve the test and ODI calendars so that this proliferation of T20 franchise tournaments doesn't suffocate and eventually take over from those very, very valuable formats of international cricket. Jimmy Anderson says no international bowlers are going to last as long as he has and his Stuart Broad has now. He says that they no bowler will be bowling test cricket well into their 30s. They will be doing what Trent Bowled did, looking at their lives and thinking, mm, got a couple of good years left in me, I'm going to chase the money on the T20 circuit. Dooley, also a Liverpool fan, has some comments to make about the beginning of the Premier League season, given the fact that I'm a Manchester United fan. We'll also cover Ian Foster, reconfirmed as All Black coach, and what happens now for New Zealand rugby and the rest of the season for the All Blacks. Dooley, welcome back. Thanks, Marty. Yeah, nice. Just got arrived back in London this afternoon. Actually, it's been a fantastic afternoon. Um, I'm holed up in Chiswick, and uh, I decided to go down and watch my new favourite football team train tonight. I'm about five minutes' walk from the Brentford Football Club. Oh, um, yes, here yes, in, stop in it. London. So um, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Chiswick, and they're just sort of up the dual carriageway about five minutes' walk away. So I thought I'd pop up there and, and watch them train. Jeez, I, I don't even know what league they play in, but, man, they're a good side. All right, let's get I this think. out of the way because I got so many messages, and you might have been one of them. What time <laughs> What time United kicking off There was the message? Oh, every five minutes was one of them, butter boom. And, exactly. And on it went, exactly. mate. You've been up in Manchester. Oh, the mood in Manchester mate. must be miserable on one half of the city side anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was unbelievable, to be honest. Um, I, they can't believe it, and, and it's great. I mean, obviously, you see what of it. The, um, the coverage back in, in New Zealand and, and I watch a lot of the football on, on Sky who I'm working for over here and um, you know the, the Neville boys and Jamie Carragher and, and yeah, Roy been King brilliant. and boy are they getting stuck in I mean it's been great they do not pull punches they don't I, I would you know man I would I know we say things and we talk a little bit about the All Blacks at times and, and how, you know, at times we're disappointed or we'd like to see more or we'd like to see this if, if some of these pundits we're talking about the All Black performances of the last four weeks, and let's not worry because I'm sure we'll get to that. But um, you know, the people back home would be would would just be blown away mm. by the way they talk about yep. some of the stuff here. Yep. They are just open and honest, and and all it is it's it's an opinion, and they have no issue voicing their opinion, and it's, it's nothing to do with whether they like the players or whether they think they're good blokes or not. People have to forget very quickly that it is not an opinion about how good a person this person is it is just purely on their sport and they are getting paid we are getting paid for an opinion that's it. and that's it yeah look well said mate and also you know this is this is where i get so disappointed at past all blacks and i look at the, the you know the, the the crew that they put up on sky sport here um and and i'm particularly critical of of, of jeff wilson who who has the the main spot and and therefore we deserve more from him Look, you know, everyone is watching the same stuff. We don't need cliches. We know when we're playing like rubbish. And that Man United side, I've supported for 47 years, mate. I mm. applaud these guys, you know, because these guys wore the jersey and they won things. And so, therefore, they have every right yeah. to say. When guys like Skulls, when guys like Gary Neville, who's won 10 titles, Keno won eight titles in 11 years. When these guys speak, they speak from a position of absolute love and respect for that club and the shirt that they wore. And what they're saying is a bunch of prissy, fanny ass fake players and posers out there pretending to be Man United players. And I, I love the fact that they stick it to them, mate. And I and I hope that those players feel upset about it because maybe that might actually propel them to start playing like the, the guys they think they are. Yeah, God, I'm it's angry been about. amazing. I mean, I, I've been blown away. I've been absolutely blown. I mean, we weren't a lot better, to be fair, um, you know, scraping to a one-all draw. Um, and, and it's all going to come down to Monday night. Isn't it? I mean, what are we playing for, Marty? What are we, I mean, for dinner, I know, I know we're not going to see no, each other. No, no, no. Uh, we'll play, let's, time, let's, but, let's do uh, that. We'll do, we'll do that at the... Uh, we'll play for dinner at the T20 when I come and see you in October in Oz, OK? Let's do that, OK? All right, perfect. All right. So, sound, sounds good. Rest, restaurant of the losers... Of the winner's choice. Of the winner's choice. Absolutely. It's all about the winner. Yeah. Simon Dool is with us, the DDP yeah. episode five. We've got so many topics to cover here, and we will get on to Fozzie being reinstated. Well, not reinstated. I mean, he's just kept his job, and he's been. He's yeah. now supported by the board 
I mean, can you imagine? Let's just talk about that for a second. So, can you imagine? <laughs> so, these, the same people that were knifing him, the same people that he knew were, were you know, working in the background to, to outmaneuver him and bring somebody else in. Then they sit there at a press conference yesterday and try and keep a straight face as they all say that they're mates. Again, look, we're all adults here. I, I, this is this is, the schmoozy, cheesy stuff is the stuff I hate the most. Yeah. I, I just don't understand why they can't be open and honest about it and transparent. If they were and maybe tried that for once, maybe they'd get a different reaction from us fans. Maybe. And they're saving their jobs, aren't they? Because if the, the, the bottom line, here's, here's what I read into it. Now, you know, I'm not as close as, as a lot of people in New Zealand are. But what I read into it is if Ian Foster went, then Mark Robinson and some board members had to go as well. Because they are the guys that made the mistake to, to have them there. Yeah. They're simple basically that. covering their own backsides. Yeah. That, that that's is it. A, to me, that is as simple as this whole matter has become. Now, is he still worthy of being the coach? Well, you know, that, that's, that's still up for debate. He's still going to prove that he is, is worthy. And the players can say what they like. But the where it's at. Wins and losses in the columns, mm-hmm. they are where it's at. And and you know, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get behind them again now and, and just continue to support them like I always have. I'll still have an opinion on them, and that's fine. But the other thing I will say about the weekend, and I, I, we didn't talk about this last week, and I talked to a couple of my South African friends who have played a lot of uh, international football and international rugby for for the Springboks, and they said, you know, the big thing with us is we do not play favourites well, and the whole week. We were the favourites. Right. And I didn't really think about that. Yeah, good point. The All Blacks were actually going into that test match as underdogs. South Africa very rarely talk cricket. They do not play favourites well at all. Yes, When have right. they beaten us when they have been dead set odds on or dead set favourites? And I actually tried to scratch my head and think about it. And I couldn't come up with too many times when they had done that. Simon Dore, the DDP, the Devil and Door podcast, episode five. All right, I know that you're doing the 100 at the moment, and this is just taking off all over the world. What you said last week uh, when we're talking about Trent Bolt and the fact that he's going to sign for a franchise and play franchise T20, you're the first first commentator out of everybody in cricket to actually outline that, and it just made so much sense when when you said it. Days later, of course, it does get announced. We've got a, a UAE version of IPL. We're going to get a South African version, and now. A, an a luminary as with a such status in the game, and I know that you know this guy, Kapil Dev, who I just absolutely loved and rated as a player. He went through that whole kind of him and both him and Hadley and, you know, those remarkable all-rounders at that time that we were growing up, Simon. And, and he says, you know, ICC, you now have a responsibility to preserve Test cricket and one-day cricket because if you let, if you keep this gate open and these T20 tournaments are now overlapping every other piece of the calendar, we're going to lose the most precious bits of the game. I can hear his plea. I don't know whether they can hear it. Well, the, the first thing I will point out is that what does Capital Dev think, or who, who does Capital Dev think runs the ICC? That, that's the first question you must ask. Okay, The ICC is run by the member countries. They appoint and they all sit on a board and there has to be uh, a consensus when decisions are made. All right, Because they all vote for them, whether it be David White turning up to a meeting or is turning up to a meeting as the as the CEO of national boards, they run the ICC. Now, yes, there are people in charge of the ICC that oversee cricket for the greater good and the growth of cricket, and and they run the tournaments, the World Cups, and the, the 50 over World Cups, the women's World Cups, the under 19s boys and, and girls or men's and women's World Cup. But the ICC essentially is run by the member countries. We all know that India are all powerful. We know that Australia and England are second and third in that line, and they probably will always get about 90% of the vote as far as around the world. So they will, they will end up getting what they want. And, and so for Capital Dev to say the ICC must do this, well, he may, he's better off going to his own board. Right, okay. And, and pleading his case there. You know, so I, I, I know we sit back and, and often I've done the same thing until I've really worked and understood how the ICC operates. And it is a very easy blame game to blame them. India have pushed and pushed and pushed for a window for the IPL. They've got it. They're pushing for an extended window for the IPL. They will get it yeah. because they provide 60 to 70% of all the income that goes through cricket in the world. They will get it. England are pushing for a window to play their 100 tournament. They'll probably get it. Australia have had a, a bit of a window, but they've actually stuffed up the BBL by making it too long and they're not paying the players anywhere near enough anymore, and they will lose an enormous amount of players. Um, UAE is going to be big. South Africa is going to be pretty big. So, look, 
what is the, the fix? And, and the only fix that I can think of, and I know we've talked about this, is do away with international T20 cricket at a bilateral stage and just play T20 World Cups. That's it. Have a window for test cricket. And maybe that window in the future might only be two months. And it might be in England. And it might be a month in New Zealand. And that might be it. You know, but, but that's that, it, it, something along those lines has to be done. Well, that's, it's radical thinking, but it needs a radical solution, doesn't it? And when you talk about the BBL, yeah, the BBL it just got absolutely suckered into exactly what Super Rugby did with global marketing opportunities yep. and new revenue streams. They got greedy, Simon. All of a sudden, they had a great product that people were watching, turning up to in their droves, television viewers uh, through the roof. Everyone seemed to love it. Then, oh, no, what we'll do, we'll do double fixtures now. We'll do triple fixtures now. And people just got bored with it. And it's as simple as that. They they just tried. They Some tried to numpty, numpty marketing executive had a great idea. Let's double it. Let's. Let's give these people twice as many games. No. No. No, 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 no. No. Yeah. I, I mean, less is more in this shit, mate. That's the whole thing the about sports. Rights, the broadcast rights aren't anymore. So you can't afford the players to stay for longer. Uh, you know, they're just, it, it was it was ridiculous. And they ruined what was initially the second best tournament. Yeah, it was. I think outside of the IPL. It, it is now probably down at number three. And after South Africa and UAE kick off, it's probably going to be down at number five or six. And I think because of the, the where the West Indies is and what the kind of, you know, the exoticness and the romance of, you know, of, and you know, of playing in the, in, the, in the Caribbean, that one will be more attractive because the BBL rides over Christmas for, you know, most, well, for everyone in the world, but it's especially relevant down this part of the world. So, look, I, I, I look at the NFL, which is probably my favourite sporting league in the world. It, there are 17 games. It runs for four months. We spend the, the rest of the eight months just absolutely obsessed with the next season starting. They have got it exactly right, haven't they? That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, they have. They have. I mean, that's exactly how it, it's exactly how you are. You're wanting it. You, you can't wait for it. And each week, you, you, you're waiting for your team to play, and you know you're wanting to qualify for the uh, for the regionals and the finals and the playoffs and the Super Bowl, all of those things. But you, you're not you're not getting saturated with games, that's and that's it. the one thing that you don't want to be doing. Jimmy Anderson as well. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Anderson. Um, him coming out and, you know, I, 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 I read his comments and I go, yeah, you're right. I wish it wasn't. He's saying that there will be no one, no pace bowlers in the world uh, who will be playing test cricket anymore at his age. Why would they when they can do what Trent Bolt does, save a couple of years at the end of their career and go and earn Petro dollars playing these T20 leagues? He thinks that, 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 that him and Brody are probably going to be the last and I kind of wonder whether the same's going to happen for batsmen as well, that by the time you get to your early 30s these days, you're thinking, well, if I've got two or three years left, well, why don't I cash in? And and, and that probably is the biggest threat, do you think, to test cricket? Yeah, I think that that's the case, absolutely. And um, look, Jimmy's spot on. He'll, no one will catch him as far as wicket's concerned because they won't have the longevity of a career. No one will get past Stuart Broad. You know, I mean, as far as the modern day players, the players coming through, I don't, I don't think anyone will get close to Stuart Broad. 300, 350 might be about uh, the max. The, the big one for me, Marty, and I know we talked about, you know, Trent Bolt last week, that the big one for me in the next year or so will be the first of the real talented youngsters to, to opt away from international cricket. And and I'm looking at guys, um, and I mentioned two the other day to, to a, a learned cricket expert, and I sort of talked about this kid, Tristan Stubbs, who was an exceptional young player from South Africa. And the other one was Devolt Brevis. Funnily enough, there were two South African boys who, um, you know, we know what happens in South Africa. We know the situation that they're in at the moment and, and you know, the the, the, the the quota system and having to play certain players and players of certain colour. And, and that's, you know, argue with or to, or to go for or against. That's their choice and, and, and they do what they want to do. But the players of that real young age, the first ones are those to opt out of international cricket and sign one of these big deals. Do Alt Brevis is already part of the as is Tristan Stubbs in the IPL. The first one of those young men to all of a sudden turn around and make, you know, five, six, seven million a year and play the four or five tournaments for the one franchise. That key changes. For me. Yeah. When that starts happening, that'll be the that'll be the next ball that'll roll on. I agree with Jimmy Anderson. Look, is it sad? Yes it is sad. Um, but it, it, it makes financial sense for everybody in the end. And, um, you know, and they all talk about families, and, and I cannot argue with that. Longevity of career is tough. You know, Trent Bolt's done, he's served New Zealand cricket. Yeah, he has, mate. No uh, yeah, okay. In year, it's a Richard Hadley career, but, but he has served New Zealand cricket. He's done everything he possibly could for that silver fern, and I've got no issue with it. I said it last week, I'll say it again. Good on him. 
Yeah, and just finally and quickly, look, and when you say that about Sir Richard, I mean, let's not forget that Sir Richard, you know, he prolonged his career for New Zealand by shortening his run-up. He actually did, you know, something, absolutely saved his body to play for his country. There wasn't T20 around at the time. One day cricket was was there, but it was kind of fledgling. If he was now... I wouldn't, you know, I would absolutely applaud him going, hey, heck no, Sir Richard, you've played 16 years for us. No, mate, play 10 or 12 for us and go and cash in for the last four years. Keep your body alive, mate. Well, the other thing about Sir Richard, if you remember rightly, he was also, uh, uh, you know, allowed to play county cricket every season. And he fortune out of playing county cricket. Benefit years, he was the high, one of the highest paid county cricketers. And at the time, you know, the, the pound was three to one. He was on very, very big money as far as county cricket at that time was concerned. And, you know, because New Zealand cricket didn't play a lot, he was allowed to go away and earn money at, at County League. But they all did. You know, John Wright at Derbyshire and Howarth at Surrey and Turner at Worcestershire. I mean, there was so many of our guys were allowed to, to go away and play County cricket and, and earn very, very... Well, deserved as well, because if you remember, GT actually stopped Absolutely. playing for New Zealand because of that, Simon. Yeah. All right, yep. then, before you go, Cheswick, okay, so just, you know, I, I just imagine a lovely, leafy little suburb outside of the main, with the cobble kind of stone streets, a couple of little lovely local pubs and, and maybe, you know, a, a nice kind of curry shop down the corner. Is that what it is? Absolutely stunning place, about uh, 10 miles west, so heading towards Richmond and uh, Kew Gardens, um, Twickenham, that sort of area. And as I say, I mean, I'm a, I'm a driver and a pitching wedge, and I could land it in the, on, the, on the kickoff spot at Brentford Football Stadium, which are be fast becoming my favourite team.